Hi all, uh, my name is Tommy, I'm from Metasin and I'm going to talk about some of the performance stuff we have been doing in the last couple of years. Uh, so the title of the talk is uh, Naked Performance with Closure. And uh, I'll start with a quote from a, with a, uh, from a famous, uh, and a famous Donald. It goes, uh, premature optimization is root of all evil. And I think we have heard this all, so it's like quite absolute, just don't do it. But I think it's misquoted usually. So actually what he says is that uh, we should forget about small efficiencies, uh, say about 97% of the time, and continues. Yet we should not pass our opportunities in that critical 3%, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so the 3% in closure, um, let's start with language. I would say that closure is like pretty uh, performant. So uh, it's mostly written in Java. It has persistent data structures. They are efficient. Lots of optimizations. So I would think that everything is uh, good there. There are some low-hanging fruits, and, uh, but it focuses on stability, so not very easy to get them in. Uh, in closure script, a uh, bit more uh, things happening. And Mike Fike, when he does a compiler like a change which emits 5% faster code, we all win big time because this is the baseline. I would like to think that the applications we build with closure, so we don't have to optimize that. So that, that would be the 97%. So let's just write this with the beautiful abstractions. And that leaves us the libraries and frameworks, what we have been doing. So uh, they should be fast. And if they are fast, we can um, build applications which are fast. If they are not, our application will be also slow. So let's go back to the year 2017 and this uh, Tech Empower Web Framework benchmark. So uh, this is like a, a place where you can put your favorite web stack in your, any, any language, and it gets like uh, numbers in these tests, like uh, JSON serialization, round trip to database, plain text, uh, some templating, and, and I was looking like, uh, where's closure? And there were a few entries. First, there was the like, composure, which we all love and we're using those days. And it's like five times uh, slower than the fastest of the Java server. So is this like it's supposed to be Java fast? And it was also um, ALEF uh, by Jack, like, the really like raw performance closure web server. And I thought, that, like, is this the best we can do? Maybe. Uh, we could do something more and thought that, OK, challenge accepted. So let's, let's try to do something. And uh, quick fast forward to year 2019. Here we are at the moment. So uh, Closure is at the moment one of the fastest web stacks out there. <laughs> and, and as these are benchmarks, uh, we should take them with a grain of salt. But uh, it's not our benchmark. We just play the game, and these are the numbers. So uh, what happened? Uh, Closure has evolved in two years a lot. Uh, we took the just like uh, we are running on Java, so the fastest Java servers, and just like uh, uh, rebuild the web stack. And, and like it's really small. So uh, if we use Java to the max and, and build only this small wrapper in top of that, we get basically the Java performance without any big penalty. And we can still use Closure as we like it. But uh, some lessons learned. First, the little things. So writing performant closure code is like really hard, actually. There's so many traps you can fall into. There's a reflection, there's a boxed math, dynamic wars, and use any of these, and then you are automatically out of your like performance budget. But how should you navigate here? So I don't have a good like uh, tip other than that uh, you should just like read the source and measure your code. There should be a book of all these little things you should avoid. But the two things like cost of abstraction of cost of immutability, that's something that we should understand, all of us. And uh, this is from 2017, uh, the awesome abstraction called equality. So in closure, you can have different type of numbers. You can say that, oh, they're the same number. They just are because the equality is so strong. But if you compare them to the like Java, uh, things underneath, it's an order of magnitude slower. And when you are doing routing and do it, you are doing one million max a second, and you are ha having an order of magnitude slower abstraction, you just like, if you know it, what you're doing, just uh, don't use them. Another thing, uh, the data structures. Uh, here's uh, four basic data structure uh, map types we are usually using in the code. One is hash map, a remap, a mutable hash map from Java, and a record. And each have like two keys, two values. 
and just we ask one key out of that. And we use criterion, we just check like how fast it uh, approximately has map, um, 17 nanoseconds to get the key a value, um, array map uh, 7, uh, mutable has map 5, and record is like 3 nanoseconds. These are like uh, nanoseconds from my M MacBook, but this is how I like benchmark. But if you are writing libraries and you have these known keys, you should definitely use records because they are compiled into classes, basically. So it's way much faster. One thing you never do when you're writing performance code is merge. Merge is like also like awesome abstraction. It, 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 it works, but like um, here we are merging uh, empty maps. And just like before the merge can con start to do anything, it's already like 200 nanoseconds per merge. And we had the budget of 600 nanoseconds for the whole thing. It was like coming from Java, making the request mapping, doing JSON serialization, routing everything. So one merge and we are like out of the game. Don't do it. You should design your performance code without merge. But uh, let's stop whining and start resolving things. So uh, there are things we can do. Data and compilers. Um, data is the thing. Uh, there are many, many talks about like how should we should think in data, and, and I totally agree. But data itself doesn't have like any performance characters. It just is. And to do something with that, we either have to like interpret uh, the data or compile it into something else. And we are using compilers in the, all the new projects. And uh, this is from Mali. It's uh, like a data validation and modeling library. And uh, uh, there's a clear separation. All the models are just data. And if you want to do something, you have to run a compiler. And there you can see this uh, transformation compiler, which in the end does uh, four or five things and gives you an optimized function for runtime, which is pure, which is total like the best thing we could come up with. Uh, in spec tools, the same functionality, it's using the uh, interpreter, and it's uh, two to four orders of magnitude slower. But let's go through like uh, this web example. So rated uh, routing library we did. Is anyone using that? Hands up. Cool, so many. Excellent. It's nice to hear that someone else is also using those. Um, in rated, the routes are also data, and there's a route compiler which uh, preprocesses that and, and gives these routing functions. In the left, we should see these like five routes, uh, and there's uh, probably something wrong. And, and one other feature we get from this like ahead of time compilation is like uh, better error messages. So there are clearly uh, some things which are overlapping, and when we uh, evaluate that code, uh, the route compiler sees that these routes are clone conflicting, and if you have the pretty printer, you get this really nice thing like uh, so you should fix these or if you want if you have legacy reasons for having conflicting routes disable that and same works with other things so there's uh, spec validation uh, for your data and like uh, closed specs so if you have extra keys you haven't defined them you can use them or even like typos and this is almost like uh, uh, programming in something like uh, pure script based on the examples from yesterday so uh, it's quite nice because we have fully dynamic system but uh, we are failing really early. But back to the web and performance. So um, 2017, Composure API was the thing we were using, and it was built on Composure. And first of all, big thanks to Ring and Composure, because I think they are the like, uh, main reason why Closure is as like, uh, popular it, as it is nowadays. So it's really like newbie-friendly. And when you're coming from other languages, this is the first thing you see, and it's, it's really nice. But performance. So uh, we have a ring handler, ping hand, uh, which returns this uh, 200 response with Pong. And we have this composure routing application with three parts, API, status, and ping. And then we just get the ring handler function. And when we send a re request to that, we ask this route, we get the response. This is nice. This is awesome. The performance. Uh, there's this tool called CLJ Async Profiler by Alexander Yakusev. And it gives these nice flame graphs about you can like see what is happening. So that routing took 7.2 microseconds. That's not much, but it's 10 times more than we had budget. So we cannot use that. And we can see from here that um, it uses functions, macros uh, compiled into functions in the end. And it's like three parts. And each part does the same thing. So we are like doing extra stuff. And I count that there's like ni nine merge operations. So. It's really good for most of the apps, but if you want to go really fast, this is out of the question. 
So the same application in ring, so, uh, so ra rated. Um, it looks about the same. I've used rated ring and we give this create this router with API status ping and we get the uh, mounted uh, ping handler for Git. We apply that and see what happens. It, it works. And the performance, um, it's a bit more than 100 nanoseconds and basically and half of that is for uh, convenience. So we are request injecting router and stuff into the request so the it's easier to handle. And the actual like path matching is that spot over there. So like uh, if we design, if, the, if performance is our criteria, we can design these kind of things. Um, uh, lesson number three, write algorithms. So uh, if you are in a maze and only thing you know is brute force, you are never going to get out. If you know the maze solving algorithm, you are out in no time. So it, it's kind of important. Uh, in Rated, there's uh, this uh, stack of six uh, routing algorithms. They are like, user doesn't have to know anything about these. They are just, uh, you could configure them, but uh, the compiler after investigating the tree takes the best possible solution. So first, there's the single static path router. If you have only one route, it creates this code which has this one string equals. Uh, that was a really fast Java thing. If you have multiple like uh, static paths, uh, it creates a lookup router which puts them into mutable hash map. It's again really fast. Uh, if they have wildcards, it's a try. That's a good uh, data structure for hosting these. Then there are these mixed and quarantine routers. And the brute force, the linear router, which is default in many, many uh, libraries, that's only used if there are conflicting routes. So if you have conflicting routes for some AVS endpoint reasons and you uh, enable, you disable the conflict, uh, conflict resolution, uh, the router will take all the conflicting routes into this guarantee router and run them in order with linear router. So the first one will match. Everything else will be as fast as uh, before. So let's go crazy. Can we go crazy with routing? Of course we can because we are nerds. We can do with anything. So uh, a router with uh, um, 1,000 generated routes uh, is with like 10 to 20 fragments, so they're really long, and the names are generated from closure code, so they are like total nonsense. Um, and then we add this one health check because there has to be this one endpoint. The load balancer is like asking once a second, "Are you still alive? Uh, can you operate?" So 1,000 generated long routes and this one extra route. So um, looks like this in rated. So there's uh, 1,001 routes. Uh, it's a uh, uh, mixed router implementation. And we can ask the ping. We get some kind of response. And we can uh, call the longest path. It's really long. And what it does, it does the match. And it uh, uh, parses the path parameters, or URL decodes them, and then returns them back. So the performance. The health check throughout above. So it's uh, 13 nanoseconds. And what it does is basically immediately passes it to the Java hash map and finds there the result and the match because it's always the same. It's pre-computed. It just returns it. There's no memory allocations there. Long, longest path is still quite fast, 460 nanoseconds. It's like the same amount as goes into two merges with empty maps. So you can choose what you want to do with your CPUs. And um, it's backed by Java, Java-based try and uh, the whole class structure is like ahead of time computed. The uh, places where we are allocating memory is first the long string comes in and in Java we have to copy the characters to like uh, iterate them fast. And then the path parameters, this is like putting them into persistent hash map. So we have to like make strings and, and like put them into map. So that was about the uh, algorithm part. And the last lesson is uh, embrace Java. So there's like uh, decades of research and, and we are running on JVM if we are doing closure. So we just like uh, should embrace that. Uh, so in this test, uh, I wanted to take the like fastest Java server available. And still today, that's the undertow in Java. And there wasn't a like uh, really good wrapper for that. So I had to make it myself, of course. It's called Pohjavirta. Uh, and it, it means underdone, underdone. Uh, but uh, it was not nice like uh, voyage back to the Java days and like relearning the stuff less like uh, the non-blocking IO, the XIO, byte buffers, threads, concurrent stuff and like zero copy request and uh, it's pretty fast because it's basically Java server with like a really tiny part of closure on top of that but 
it allows us to like run ring handlers with it. Uh, in the uh, tech environment test, it's running like uh, 3.9 million requests per second. That's pretty nice. On my local machine, I can get this uh, 125,000 requests on my laptop. And actually, in this morning, I found a bug there. The zero copy request was uh, actually copying the thing. So I started to do this partial copy request. And it's out of the 600 nanoseconds we are doing the closure side, uh, 200 nanoseconds goes away. So I will fix that and put the new entry to the like tech environment. It's, an, it's like a REPL, but it takes two weeks. When I commit the thing, it takes two weeks for the, all the tests to run. So I will see, was it good or not? Uh, another library, uh, we have to parse JSON and format JSON. And uh, there's excellent tools for this. There's data uh, JSON. It's written fully in Clojure. There's just higher, which is uh, Clojure and Java combined. But um, when you check uh, Jackson, which is the fastest Java thing, so like uh, it is f really fast. And both of the closure, existing Clojure versions were like uh, two to five, at least two to five times slower than that. So I, I threw this challenge to my coworkers, Mika and Kalle, and said that, OK, I think that if we just like, uh, write all the things, we, we use this higher level wrapper, Jackson data, data bind, and like, rewrite all the like, uh, encoders and decoders in Java, it will be really much faster. And it was, because um, in uh, encoding, there's basically zero like, penalty. It's the same performance as Jackson. And in th this test, it, it matters. And JSONista was born. JSONista, we pronounce it. Uh, last thing, uh, this small library called Porsas. So one of the tests was uh, round trip to the database. And um, there was java.jdpc. That's like, uh, again, uh, one of the reasons why people, when they come to Clojure, they feel happy because it's, it's data. And you get the data uh, out of database, uh, maps out of database. But um, it wasn't very fast. And I, I talked with Sean Cornfield about that. And uh, I pushed the performance test there. And, and we noticed that there's a lot of stuff happening. And the library is quite old. So Sean started to do the JDPC next. And I wanted to quickly have this like ridiculously fast thing and, and wrote this small library. It's compatible with JDPC next. And it's basically just like compiling based on the database definitions, the transformer func functions ahead of time. And again, it's basically zero overhead. When you compare it with the Java, it's like um, nanoseconds delays. And one nice thing with that was also that there was the async uh, database. So it works with Postgres and MySQL. It uses the Java Vertex client. And uh, wrap that. You can see this, uh, some of the source code in the screen. And with that, um, it's um, almost half a million requests per second in a TFB. And locally, uh, I'm running the database and the server in the same machine, so it's like 55,000 requests. That's pretty nice, and the CPU is like yelling. But um, that was the last one of those. There's a, a single query uh, test. So what's next? There was this like uh, benchmark game, and we played that, and now we have a result. So that it was that all. So actually, I think that's just the beginning. And um, there's some really nice developments happening in the JVM at the moment. And the first one is this uh, profile-guided optimizations for the Graal. And currently, when you de uh, develop Graal-based stuff, you have either a choice that you have the cheat version, which is really fast, throughput and latency, or you have the native images, which are like a bit slower, but small memory. And now there's uh, this second uh, compiler phase coming to Graal, this, uh, where you first compile the um, native image with this profiling on, and then you run it with production load with this profiler. They ga gather the information, so what is the hot code path? Then you recompile that, and then it should be as fast as the JIT version. If this happens, we have these 22 megabyte servers, which uh, spin up in 20 milliseconds. They are fast as the fastest like JIT version, and we can put them into the cloud. So, and we can still develop the whole thing in the JIT version in the, with the REPL and everything. So looking forward to this. Project Loom, I don't know nothing about continuations, but they are smarter colleagues, and I can ask what, what are those. Uh, and the last one, the Phoenix framework. Uh, Andrea uh, told about that yesterday, and I've been like checking that out for the last half a year. And I think they have done so many things right, and we don't have those in Clojure. So I'm actually now like studying that and seeing that like uh, does it carry me? Will I start doing uh, Elixir uh, Phoenix because that's so cool, or is there something that we could take away to the Clojure side? 
Uh, the libraries which were born in the test, so uh, would I use these in production? Definitely. Uh, would I recommend you to use them in production? Definitely not. So Reitit and Jisonista, they are like proven, they are like uh, two years old, but Pohjavirta Porsas and the other ones, they are like really bleeding edge. But if you are interested in this kind of performance stuff and you need this, so uh, talk to me or anyone with the Metosin hoodies and like, let's see what we can cook up. We should finalize this. And one possible outcome, uh, we have this uh, sticker driven development. So we have the stickers for this nice um, two snowmen and, and from that we have the like, uh, a uh, possible framework coming to closure called Talvi. Uh, we know what it might do. It has been there for half a year. We haven't had any time. But the idea that uh, add this glue, the er error messages, and this like developer ex experience, and the Graal VM, and make some kind of nice packets out of this. And this is something we probably are not, are not, are not doing ourselves only. So if you are interested, talk to us. And there are... Uh, not uh, those were Metosin libraries I mentioned, but there's just DevOps stuff and like Lasinia, which is by Walmart and these best parts of Closure. Some talks, if you're interested in uh, performance, Jack Delman had excellent talk in 2014. Uh, Tom Crayford, it was in Euro Closure. Uh, Jonas Östlund, uh, last Closure DE, and then the Graal VM, which describes the PGOs. It's quite new. Uh, I will add links to the slide share later. But uh, this is starting to be the last slide. So uh, naked performance, uh, what should we take away with this? Uh, I would say that we can create really fast libraries and web applications in Clojure nowadays. And the four tips are mindless little things, but only for the 3% of the code. So it, it looks hairy, but it's fast. But then uh, data and compilers, that is important for performance, but also for development experience. Choose the right algorithms, and then embrace Java and the upcoming Graal VM. And always measure. There's a uh, link for the closure goes fast. There's all the best toolings uh, listed. But that was my all. So thank you for listening. Do we have time for questions? Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, I'm wondering what was the original motivation for you to develop these high performance libraries? Uh, was there some business use case or something you do for work or just the bad benchmark results from 2017 or what was it? Um, my friend was doing uh, a gaming backend with Clojure and we were discussing about performance and then I just like checked are we performant and I realized we are not and like uh, decided to do something for that. It was just like numbers. When we see numbers it's easy to like know when you're better with those. No real reason in the beginning. Hey, Tommy. Uh, do you think there's an opportunity to maybe have alternate implementations of some of the core closure functions? Because if you're complaining about how some of the things are slow, but we don't necessarily want to give up stability in general, but in some cases, then have like a fast merge, and then so you could like replace parts of the internal closure. Oh, that's a really good question. So should we have these like uh, fast versions? And, and in our libraries, there's usually this fast merge, fast get, and fast associate. And they're like just copied from project to project. So I think it would be beneficial to have this some, someone who is really interested in this, like publish them into one place. And an another thing related to that, I think like uh, many of the rules are like really mechanical. So for example, if you have using get in, and you give this uh, like vector of, of five levels, Actually, that is really slow because uh, the vector is uh, read as a sequence, so it uses the first and rest. And if you unroll that manually to like uh, for threading max, or just like if they're keywords, you can say that get the first key, second key, third, uh, third key, and so on. It's like easily 
uh, five times faster. And we could have a rewrite rule for this, but I don't know whether it's a good idea to have like write slow closure and then rewrite it too fast. But definitely, make the library. I will use that. Uh, I would like to uh, hear what you have to say about the, um, uh, the when you compare to to closure script. Um, and uh, because the, the the closer you get to the JVM, the you of course get more performance in the enclosure, but uh, you also uh, go further away for from from reusing stuff in in enclosure script. Yeah, that's a, a good point. So, uh, for example, the try compiler was originally written in closure, and uh, I just studied like could it be faster in closure. So there's a protocol which implements this try compiler. And, and now there are two implementations. In the JVM, there's a J uh, J Java try compiler, and then there's the generic which is used in the closure script. But it's like uh, on closure three times slower. So like, but it's behind the protocol, so it's still compatible. It can be used for both. But there will be two codes, and I don't know how to write fast closure script. So it's just like idiomatic closure and the fast Java version. So if someone is really good at uh, fine-tuning closure script performance, happy to hear that. Well, I wonder <coughs> if it would be interesting idea to uh, write like uh, closure performance winter. Like uh, if you write mer uh, merge and if you can replace with something else that's faster than merge, it just linter just suggest use this instead. What, uh, do you have a take on this? That would be nice. It could be either like a linter or a rewriter. So uh, maybe CLJ Condo should have this like performance option. Full request, still time. <laughs> 